Hi everyone, this is Mindy for Honeybee Stamps and in today's video I'm going to be creating a card using the new Lovely Layers Water Lily and this is going to be available on May 19th after the live release party on the Honeybee Stamps YouTube channel. So I'm going to get started with my project and to do that I'm going to be die cutting out the Lovely Layers die set from White Cardstock. I'm going to be using hammer mill cardstock and I trimmed it down to three inches by six inches so that it would fit in my mini buzz cutter. Now I'm only going to be using one of the blooms. There's another one that's a smaller bloom on a stem. I'm just going to do the bigger bloom that's going to sit on a lily pad. So I just die cut all of those pieces from white. You could definitely do it from some colored cardstock, but I always just kind of start with white. And then if I want to make another one out of colored cardstock, I can. What I had intentions here for was to uh, do my own colors and really layering up my colors is what I had intentions for. So after all of my pieces are cut, I do like to go through and I use the layering guide that's provided on the back of the sheet that comes with the die set. I use that as a guide to line up all of my pieces. Once I have that all in place, including the center portion, I'm going to start uh, layering up my color. So I'm doing that with the lily pad is what I'm going to start with first. And I just have a piece of white copy paper here that I'm going to be doing my ink blending on. I'm using all the stress inks because I wanted a nice vibrant color on here. So for my lily pad, I started with Twisted Citron. And on these dies, I'm going to bring it up close. They have this etching in there, which is beautiful. You can really see it in person, a little hard on camera, but there's etching on the lily pad and also the flower. Now I'm coming in with Lucky Clover, and I started in the back, and I'm going to work my way towards the front. I'm really just going to leave a hint of that Twisted Citron at the very front. Then I'm going to move on to adding some color to my flower or to my lily. So I'm starting with a really, really light shade of pink. This is a spun sugar out of the Distress Ink line. I am not covering really the entire thing, just kind of grazing over it, just adding a smidge of color to all of the layers. After I have that light color added to all of the layers of my water lily, I'm going to bring it back in and put it together once again, just kind of placing it over each of the layers so I know where my color is sitting at this point. I'm really going to be building up the color. So I wanted to have a dark color in the center and have it blend out. I don't want it to overpower the image. I just want it to be kind of like it's peeking through. So for that, I am using Picked Raspberry. And I'm doing the same thing where I bring in each of those layers to see how that's looking. I'd rather come in and add color to it versus come in too strong. With Distress Inks, I really like to use my blending brushes because I feel like I'm not going to get any harsh lines. It gives more of a softer blend. But you can use whatever blending tool you happen to have on hand. Now, when I have that Picked Raspberry done, I, I wanted to amp it up a little bit. I wanted to add just a little bit more contrast. It is good just as it is, but I really like to amp things up and really make it kind of pop. So now I'm bringing in Seedless Preserves. Now for this one, I am being very careful. It doesn't look like it because I sped the video up quite a bit, but I'm just adding this Seedless Preserves just around the edges and there's just a hint in the center. This is going to leave me with almost a magenta color on some of the areas. And I really loved this color combination just by adding that little bit of Sealer's Preserves. Once I have that done, I'm going to do the center portion. So the top layer is going to be in Scattered Straw. The bottom layer, which is kind of the more solid piece, is going to be in Fossilized Amber. Once I have everything colored in, I layered my water lily up and then I took it back apart so that way I could lay out the pieces in the order that they need to go to create my flower. And I'm taking my liquid glue from Honeybee Stamps and adding that to the back of each piece. It's going to layer up pretty good. If you want to add little bits of them, thin foam squares to that, you could, but I felt this was going to give enough dimension. So as I was layering my pieces up, I kind of started to panic as I added the last piece because I thought maybe I forgot to add the center. The center I was really happy with because it literally snugs right at the very top of the last piece I'm going to attach. You'll see that here in just a moment. 
I just took the lighter colored piece that I did and attached the two so I could create that center. And then it's going to fit in really just like a puzzle piece. So I didn't miss a step, thankfully. It could just tuck it right in there. So now I have my flower and my lily pad done. Now I know typically lily pads are probably more of a really, really dark green, but I really love the pop of the bright green underneath my flower. Now for a background for my card, I really wanted to have kind of a waves look to it. And what better way to do that than with the layered waves stencil, except I'm only going to use the first layer. I'm not sure if it's top or bottom, but it's the one with the more kind of thin lines to it so I can get more ink onto my cardstock. So I picked out the one layer from the stencil. I took my hammer mill cardstock and just kind of lightly attached it to my magnetic work surface with a repositionable tape. And then I'm holding the stencil down with my magnets. Now this has really thin lines, which is good, but I am going to kind of hold the lines down with my hand. I just don't want them moving all over the place. You probably could spray something like pixie spray on the back of it to tack it down a little bit. I'm just going to hold it with my hands when I need to. So I started towards the top using salvaged patina. Then I came in with a salty ocean. This is a blueprint sketch, and then I'm going to finish off the bottom with a villainous potion. Now, towards the top, I did really light handed with that first color, the salvaged patina, and did it so it was going to fade off at the very top. Now, once I have that down, I remove the stencil and doing one of my favorite things, which is just going back over those open areas. I don't typically like bright white lines on my backgrounds, so I like to go back over it with the same colors but I went over it too good. Uh, I wanted the background to be just a little bit more bold. So I placed the stencil back in place and I'm gonna come back in with each of those colors once again, kind of applying a little bit more ink. I don't wanna go too heavy handed, meaning I don't wanna to apply too much pressure because I don't want that stencil to shift. So I'm just really coming in with a lot of ink on my brush. I'm going to take this panel over to my splat box and I'm going to spray some water on it because distressed inks react with water. So I spritzed that water down, picked it up with a dry paper towel, and then I'm also going to add some white splatters. So I just have some bleed proof white paint, something like that. It's white paint. Any white paint will work. I diluted it with water a little bit and then flicked that over the background as well. So I'm taking my heat tool now. I'm just gonna help speed up the drying process of that white paint so I don't smear it. And I really love how this is coming together and the two colors. So instead of messing with two pieces, I added a little bit of liquid glue to the bottom of my water lily and then placed that onto my lily pad. I'm not going to attach it to the front of my card just yet. It was just easier for me to kind of move around and get an idea of where I wanted a sentiment to go and how this was going to look on the front of the card. So the sentiment I'm going to use is from this new Be Still stamp set. This is brand new and will be available on May 19th. It has a lot of beautiful heartfelt sentiments. So I'm just going to stamp it on white cardstock using the intense black ink from Honeybee Stamps. This stamp set literally is really amazing. I love how Honeybee doesn't just do happy birthday or have a great day. I mean, there are ones on there like that, but they really come up with some great wording that can go on the front or the inside of your card. So I use the coordinating die to die cut this out. And now check this out. I was really impressed when I took this off of my plate. It also not only die cut it out, but it die cut in the center. So it gave it a really finished look. Now I'm going to use that same piece of cardstock and just die cut this out a couple more times so that I can layer my sentiment later on. Now that I have most of my components ready for my card, I can start putting this together. I trimmed down my front panel to four by five and a quarter. I added another piece of white cardstock trimmed to that same size behind it just to give it a little bit of a lift. And then I'm adding this to the front of a um, A2 size side folding card base. So four and a quarter by five and a half. Now I took my sentiment and I'm layering it together with those extra die cut pieces that I created. And then I'm gonna place this on the front of the card. So I'm adding my sentiment first down towards the bottom. I'm just going to eyeball it and make sure that my margins are even on each side. Then I'm taking the water lily and I am adding just, it's a really, really thin foam tape to the back of it 
to kind of give it some separation from the background. Now I could have left it just like this, but I really wanted to add some embellishments and I found these Ocean Wave Ocean Waves Pearl stickers. So I found some on here that I thought were really pretty. It kind of has a pink and blue mix on it, but there's some light blue, there's a little bit darker blue. Either of these would really work. So I added a few of them down towards the bottom of my sentiment and a couple up towards the top. Now I couldn't walk away from this card without adding some sparkle. So I took some stickles and I am drawing a line over those etched lines that the die provided on my cardstock. It gives it such a beautiful look. It's it's kind of emphasizing the lines without overdoing it. So here is a close up look of that. You'll see also the close up look in the pictures too at the end. I hope you enjoyed today's card project. I will have the supplies listed down below in the video description and the new lovely layers of water lily and be still stamp set will be available on the honeybee stamps website on May 19th.